In this video, we're going to look at working with patterns. Now, to start with, on the instrument tab, I'm going to load in some French horns, and I'm not going to use the key switch version. I'm going to go to the portato horns, and we see here we have velocity switching. And I'm going to take this 2.0, which determines the length of the portato, and load that in for the sound. Now, I'm going to switch to pattern mode. Now, here, patterns are loaded onto individual keys on the keyboard and they can be loaded uniquely for each of the 16 parts. Now you can put one pattern onto every individual key, so you could theoretically have up to 128 per part, although in practice, you'll probably only use a few. Now when we're in pattern mode here, the idea is that we can audition them from here, and then we can load them into the parts, or we can even drag and drop them into the DAW. So let's go to brass, and I'm gonna start with some French horn ones. Now to audition, I'm gonna click this pattern audition button, and as I click on the patterns, they'll play. I click there to stop it, and I can also transpose them up or down an octave using these buttons. And when it's transposed down low like that, of course, there are no notes being triggered in that range. So let's go back to the neutral triggering, and let's load in some patterns. Now, we can either double-click a pattern, and that'll load it onto C0 at the bottom, or we can just drag it onto the note that we want. So I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to drag it up high out of the playable range of the instrument. And there it is on C sharp. I meant to aim for the C. Let me do that again. I just click that X to clear. In this case, the single pattern, but it'll clear all the patterns that are associated with that part. So there we go on the C and I'll hit that note. And I hit it again to stop it. And that's in latch mode. You'll recall in the first video I showed in the preferences, we have MIDI patterns. When this is on, it means that it's latch mode and you hit the key once to trigger it, hit it again to stop the trigger versus when this is disabled. Now I just need to keep my finger down and as soon as I release my finger from the note, it'll stop. But let's go back to here and put it back on and drag some more patterns in. Let's take maybe this one over here. I'll audition it. All right, that's fine. I'll take that and I'll drag that to the note next to it. And let's take a, a trombone one. And even though it's a trombone one, it's going to trigger the French horn that's loaded in to this part. Let's listen to this. Okay, that's working nicely. I'll drag that over here. And we have our three trigger notes. Now we have global play, and we need to determine which of the multiple patterns associated with this part is going to be triggered when we hit the global play button. And to do that, we click hold here and we can choose whichever one. So let's say I choose the middle one. And now when I hit global play, that's the one that's triggered. And we can also audition them individually from the little play buttons right here. And what's great about using this type of pattern integration in Philharmonic 2 is that we can incorporate the patterns with some live playing. For example, I can hit this trigger note and then in the playable range of the instrument, add on and play a part in addition to it. So that works nicely. Now we can drag and drop these into the DAW, and there's a couple of ways of doing it. I can drag this right in over here, and if I play it back now, we'll hear that pattern. But we can also drag it in from over here. And the advantage of doing that is we can take advantage of the intensity sliders here and the key and quantize. Now, let me show you how this works. Let's say I'll select this first one. And we have this intensity slider, which scales the MIDI velocities of the notes in the pattern. So let's play this pattern. And if I drag and drop now, it's going to maintain these settings and drag and drop it at the reduced velocities, and we'll hear it play back now appropriately. And same thing goes for the transposition. So we can set the key individually for each of these patterns. That one's in A, 
and the second one is in D, and the third one is in A. So maybe I want them all to play in the same key. I'm going to click there and transpose this one up so that's also playing in A. And now when I trigger the D, we'll hear it. This D trigger note, we'll hear it in the same key as the others. So I think it's a really creative way to use these is to trigger the patterns and play along with them. Now, if we want to remove any of the individual patterns from this part, we click hold there and choose these X's, and that'll remove them individually. And we can similarly quantize to change the feel of any of the associated patterns. So for example, this one here, the first one, maybe I want to have that one in more of a swing feel. I can go something like that. So we can do that uniquely for each pattern. Now with the key, we can set them uniquely here. Or again, like I showed you in the first video, we can set this over here and it'll override the individual keys and just set all the patterns to this global key. So they're now all playing in G. And if we switch here, we'll see that they're all going to be automatically transposed to the key set here. And if we put that to off, they'll revert to their original keys. So those are the functions in pattern mode. And the one key thing to remember is to keep these trigger notes out of the playable range so that if you're doing any live triggering or if you're dragging it into your DAW, you don't want the notes in the pattern playing back to trigger your key trigger notes. You'll get a cacophony of sound if that happens. So that's pattern mode. See you for more in the next video.